One, two, one, two, three, four. Almost a weekend and you don't know what to do. Or you just need something fun to listen to. So, so fun. Yes, we're on the so air. So and the gang's all here, all things on the South Side. We're listening to the South Side Fun. Looking for the best South Side breweries. Or you might just need an awesome place to eat. Southside Pond! Greenwood Evergreen! Southside Blue Island Beverly. Pay listen, all sub to You're tuned in to the Southside Pod. Southside Pod! Old Plum Midlothian! Southside Pod! Old Fort Chicago Ridge, Flossmore, and Bridgeview. You're listening to Southside Pod! I got an email from a woman. Oh. Congratulations, Chris. Did yeah. your wife know about this? First time ever. So, <laughs> no, I thought you would get a kick out of this, so All I right. wasn't going to do this Depends on the microphone. Depends on what the email said, I guess. No, it was her reaching out because she heard me on the podcast. Okay. And she goes, my husband and I have been listening to the podcast. Dear Chris. And we, my husband keeps saying, I know these guys. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I know oh, these guys. That can't be oh, good. No. He grew up in Champaign-Urbana. And was in middle school in the late 90s when we were on the radio oh, together. Oh, no. boy. And he listened to us. And he in finally put it together. It was Chris Lanuti and Wild Bill from the Morning Alternative in Champaign-Urbana. Wow. The Why was he and listening 25 years she ago, man? He sent me an email. And he was super excited. And you know what I responded back? His parents should go to jail for letting him listen to us yeah. when he was in middle right. school. Exactly. We used to run a disclaimer, like, don't listen to this show. We would make Howard Stern blush. Like, we were a little out of control at times. It was, it was we got more suspe- than out of control. Listen, I'm never going to say why we got suspended, but what we got suspended for, we would be canceled everywhere. We for. might be, like, lose everything. Oh, yeah. They would take our houses. <laughs> they would take our children. They would take our wives. 1995 was a different different year, It was right? a different world back yeah. then. And back then, it was just funny. And, like, somebody complained. They're like, we're going to have to spend you for two weeks, but you're, like, the number one guy, so you're back. I'm like, all right, cool. And we just moved on with our lives. Sure. But like now, when I think about it, I'm like, oh, thank God there's no tapes of that floating around on the internet. Right. You or know? are there? Like people are worried about what could happen to them because of a tweet. I'm worried if they develop technology to capture radio waves out in Saturn and drag them back so they can re-listen to my shows from the 90s. Like that scares the hell out of me. A pitcher of beer, a pitcher of beer, let's order another pitcher of beer. That pitcher of beer should come over here. I love that pitcher of beer. I love me the the new John Brand as he sits down here, uh, the the owner operator of Open Outcry. How are you, John? I'm well, thank you. What does that mean, the new? The relaxed John Brand. Like you went on your first vacation a long time, you you got back, and you're chill, and you got a stogie now you keep in your mouth, and you you just kind of you're even more relaxed at the bar. Like you you lean against the bar, like yeah, what's going on? on How are you? You're a happy guy. The vacation helped, and 41 years without a nicotine habit out the window. Uh, these are, th- these have helped as well. I don't know what I don't know what this is. You but don't yeah, even I, have to light it. You're just no, sitting here with an unlit cigar. Do you like them or do you just I do chew like them? them? I do like them. In fact, but but because <laughs> it I was like the end of a, a pen, a pen cap. <laughs> You've just been gnawing on. Just so I don't end up smoking <laughs> ten of these a day, I'll just dangle it in my mouth for a couple hours and then it's I can get by with away. one or one or two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, you brought something down here for us to taste while we're talking today, and this is a brand new unveiling. From Open Outcry. It's experimental. It, Actually, the first time we're sharing this is at the 9-foot uh, Oak Basement Bar. So what you're drinking, Hannah, what you're pouring is Speculator Light. Your main beer is Speculator. You've always told me that this, this is your this is your one that you just envision everybody to drink at Chicago's beer. It's Speculator. It's your it's your main thing. This is what you put when you when you decide you're going to to add some flavors to it, some fruit to beers. This is the one that you go to. This is your staple beer. For, for a number of reasons, but it is it has become our flagship. It makes up a... Uh, a healthy percentage of our total sales. It was the beer that was Im- it was important to us uh, because we wanted a beer that was approachable for everybody uh, in the community and on the on the south side, especially for the folks that aren't really into craft beer, where they prefer American light lagers like the Bud Light, the Miller Light, the Coors Light drinkers. I really wanted to make those people uh, feel comfortable coming in and having great pizza and and having a locally made beer. So Speculator was really important to us from the first day we launched. We were, we spent a lot of time in developing that beer before we 
uh, opened up the doors and it has, it's worked out that way. It's become a, it makes up almost a third of our sales. Wow. So now this is a light version. So normally when I think light beer, I think you're, you know, your Miller light, your Coors light, your Bud light. Um, some people are into these ultra beers, the idea that like they're trying to get calories down. So is this also supposed to be like a not a less filling, less a less calorie filled beer? Is that what you're going for here? Well, that and and a little bit more of approachable. It's less sweet than Speculator. It's lower in alcohol. So this is around 3.8, 3.9%. Okay. So a little bit closer in ABV to uh, an American light lager, um, whereas the re- the regular Speculator is 4.8. And it's experimental. We're just trying it out. We're, we're, we, we're exp- uh, we've tried a few different uh, iterations of it. Uh, we felt good with this one, so we made a couple kegs of it. We started selling it. It's a good light beer. This comes from a guy that when it comes to light beer, always drink his dad's Miller Lite, doesn't like Bud Light, and can kind of stand Coors Light. Like, I'm not a big light beer drinker. This is a good one, though. Very I'm good. very happy with Will, with what our head brewer, Will Turner, is doing to our beer portfolio. He's brewing beers that bring in uh, the craft beer drinkers, the esoteric styles, the progressive uh, variants and hazy IPAs and uh, you know pastry stouts and interesting beers. At the same time, he's putting out beers that folks that aren't into that can still come in, like I said, have have a good meal with their family, and maybe they're not into those things, but they can still either pour a speculator, or if this beer, if we get good feedback on this and we continue to uh, we continue to brew it, we'll we'll put out a, a light version of it. You have that light at the other end of the tunnel. You got you got the governor telling everybody uh, the, over the last couple of days, uh, anybody sixteen and over is getting a, can start getting a vaccine starting on April twelfth, and we might have everything completely open starting in mid May. As a business owner, you got to be like, yes. It certainly feels that way, but I'm also going to remain cautious, cautiously optimistic because um, we st- I think we've started and stopped at least three or four times on the last yeah. twelve months. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to res- I'm going to reserve my excitement here just for a little bit longer and um and and just try to I, we can't go out and hire 20 people right now because it's just too soon but the short answer to your question yes it feels like maybe we've kind of made it through and uh it, it does feel good for sure well john you know i love you I, I love popping in there and taking a look at everything that you guys are doing and uh this speculator light is good Yes, and I is. think it's something that you'll find. I think you're going to get good feedback on it, and people are going to want this on the menu. Well, we'll really see. If people, if people want it, we'll keep brewing it. And um, this is all Will's. First of all, we talked about it six months ago. Mentioned it to Will. Will kind of mulled the idea. Did some- uh, Do brewers hate making light beers? You could be no, honest with me. No, Did he no, look at you no. like, well, I got to make do. a light? Like, do they, <laughs> like, they, like making a, they like making a beer out of a donut more than they like making a light beer, right? Hey, anybody, any of your listeners that are home brewers or have worked in a brewery know that the irony of beer is that, is that the, the lighter the beer, in fact, the harder it is to make, the more technically sound your brewing, your brewing has to be to produce a nice, light-flavored beer because you aren't able to hide behind adjuncts and hops and... Um, sweetness and things like that if you are not a skilled brewer like a guy like will turner this uh this beer is not going to taste very good but the guy's been doing this for 30 years and he knows how to brew beer and to be able to put something like this out on the second or third try is a pretty impressive feat and when he shared this with me the other day i'm like well we can serve this now. i'm comfortable putting this across the bar now and getting feedback right now on no, this beer. it's good it's good john i'm gonna tell you right now it's good stuff so check out the speculator light the regular speculator, the entire list of options that are over at Open Outcry. Remember, you're still doing the, are you still doing the delivery? Are we, are we doing that still or This no? is a permanent feature to this business. In it's fact, we, uh, nice. yeah, in fact, we're, um, uh, we're going to be hiring more delivery drivers and uh, phone clerks because it's a business that continues to serve us and our community well, we think. All right, so check them out. They're over on the 10900 block of Western Avenue, and you can check them out online as well at openoutcrybrewing.com. John, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you yeah, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. A pitcher of beer, a pitcher of beer. Let's order another pitcher of beer. That pitcher of beer should come over. Of beer. A friend to the broadcast basement on demand radio network and his first time on Southside Pod, Ben Belton. Uh, I'm going to tell everybody what you do. You are a Hollywood insider. You like work for studios. You get the inside dope on things that are going on, not only 
at the movies, but also these on demand, these streaming services, things going on with Disney and Marvel and everything else like that. A lot of times before it actually gets out there. And so I like to have you on every once in a while talk about entertainment and especially because things are going to open up here. You're out in California. You guys will be locked down until 2035 out here on the (laughs) South side. The world is, is fairly open, not crazy open, but we're going to get there soon. I think. So I think the movies are starting to come back. There's theaters that are open in the area. We're not getting the big ones though yet. Is there anything on the horizon? What's going on with these Disney movies? They're coming out, but now it's looking like they're going to coincide with a release with Disney Plus. So Cruella um, is is going to, as well as um, Black Widow was supposed to come out on, I believe it was May 7th. Right. Now it's it's taking the date that Shang-Chi had, the other Marvel film that was you know slated for the July 4th-ish holiday. Um, they are now moving Black Widow into that spot, and it's also going to be released on Disney+. Plus. So it's going to come out simultaneously on Disney+, Plus at the same time, but they'll probably do the thing where they charge you 20 bucks to watch it? That's probably what you're looking at. So, so just some minor changes to that. Um, and the issue I think that you know the, the listeners are going to see is that you might see some other films move in relation to that. So with Disney's announcement today, because moving Black Widow out of that May 7th spot means some of the films that we're thinking about moving around May 7th may not. Right, because nobody wants to go up against a powerhouse Marvel movie. So now you might have somebody that decides to do something. Do you get the feeling that is this is it all contingent on New York and California? Even if uh, if the South Side of Chicago is open, there's populated areas that are open. Texas seems to be open. Is it all contingent on like the two coasts, really, for when we start getting to see movies? Or are we going to see anything that you think is interesting over the next month or so? Well, it really is contingent upon not only, I mean, it really is L.A., honestly. It's not, I mean, I, I don't mean to, you know. Don't insult the South Side. That's all I can. You can insult New York or you want to. Well, <laughs> Don't insult the South Side. The South Side's going to find you out there in SoCal. That's that's right. Um, well, so L.A., you know, this is where a lot of the studios are. And, you know, a lot of decision makers are here. And these people live in the communities around here. And they're seeing, well, um, I still go to my grocery store and I'm waiting in line and people are masked up and things like that. So that's affecting their decisions. And also they're looking at any evidence that they can see to see whether it makes sense to open. And it's it's just, it's going to be a slow build to make that case. And so until then, um, it is very much going to depend on LA and to some extent New York. But I think at this point, New York is, you know, it's it's opened up more than LA has. So that's that's one of the issues. I give Ben a hard time, but he is originally a South Sider. Is there anything that's coming up that is exciting for you. I know, uh, the like on the streaming services, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is out. That that looked really good. Its first episode that came out, and I I like that. I like the way that WandaVision ended. That was a really good series. At least you know Marvel started to figure out. Disney's figured this whole thing out. They're like, well, we can't put out movies, but we'll put out these episodes, and we'll continue to be creative and build towards our movies, so people are still interested in them when they come out, which I think is really cool. But is there anything right now in the pipeline or something that's out right now or coming out in the next week or so that you're like, if you get a chance to check this out, either streaming or 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 actually if you can go to a theater, is there anything that you that you like right now? Well, um, you know, some films that are still coming out. I've heard amazing things about Mortal Kombat. And I and I'm really I mean, I played the video game. Like, you're, you're telling me a video game movie is going to be good. I've heard it's amazing. Now, listen, I'm not a fan of the movies. I, I played the video game many times. Um, you know, several versions, <laughs> but, but and I liked it a lot. Um, but I, 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 when someone's telling me this movie is going to be great, but it's supposed to come out, um, it's coming out in, in a few weeks, I think. And then you've also got, of course, Cruella, which is coming out in May, which is also going to be on Disney. And I think that'll be cool. It's going to be a darker look at Cruella. And I think it's got a PG 13 rating on it. I don't know if I'm really in the Cruella DeVille though. I mean, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. My wife, my daughter, they watch this stuff. Maleficent, Maleficent too. Like really how many looks at the, at the bad guy from, uh, from sleeping beauty do I need? Like, I mean, like <laughs> I, and maybe girls are into this more than guys. Like I've never sat back and said, Oh, I wonder what the woman who made puppies in the coats, uh, did in her spare time before she became that in a cartoon. Like I, that's never been me. Well, I tend to be a fan of Emma Stone, so anything she's in, I usually want to check it out just because she, you know, she's always great in, in anything she's in, which should be cool. I think another project that's going to be really cool to see is Loki, and, um, you know, the, that's the Disney Plus series. And then, of course, um, in not 
it, you know, the Quiet Place is coming out early too. So they moved it up. Is that the Quiet Place too, the new one? Yeah. So that's the second part of that. And I liked the first one. I thought it was really inventive. I thought it was great. That's one I might want to watch in the theater. That might get yeah. me to, to show up and sit in the actual theater and actually watch yeah. it. Like, I'm not really afraid of theaters. I just don't like spending the money on it. I think we've all, you know, Hollywood's got a problem, Ben. We all figured out that we could sit at home with our big giant TVs and make our own popcorn. And it's actually cheaper than going to the theaters, even if they're spent. If they're charging me 20 bucks and I sit down with me, my wife, and the two older kids to watch a major motion picture, that's five bucks a ticket right there. And I made my own popcorn on the stove in the pot with the oil, you know, and I'm drinking a beer. Like, I, why do I got to go spend a hundred bucks to go do that? If I, you know, when you go between the alcohol, the food, the, the four tickets, Hollywood's in trouble, I think, with this. Well, I mean, I thought that, but, you know, it's interesting. You see the demand. I mean, we, we there were some theaters that opened out here. Um, you know, of course, Christopher Nolan came out to watch. I think it was, came out to see Tenet at uh, the AMC Burbank, which is um, not far out from Hollywood there. And the response and the tickets so far sold, people just want to get out of the house. You know, they're sick of being stuck. And so I think that's what Hollywood has on its side. And they've got some good product coming out. It's just... We're probably, like everything else, we're getting extended another two or three months. So things that you thought would come sooner are actually going to show up in the, in the months ahead instead of now. What you think of the Snyder Cut? I liked it. I mean, I'm a D, I, I, I was always a DC guy more than a Marvel guy, but Marvel's made so many better movies and I'm really into their whole thing. But as somebody who, who loved Superman and Batman and the Justice League stuff with Wonder Woman, I mean, I'm kind of kind of missing no Green Lantern appearance. But I mean, overall, I thought that was the one that, that's the movie that I wanted. Even though it was four hours long, that was the movie that I wanted as a fan. Well, right, and the cuts were so much better. I mean, the way they cut the scene with the terrorist and Wonder Woman, the, I mean, it was so, it, it was so much better. But part of the problem with Zack Snyder is, is, is editing. And I mean, yes, it's a great film, but if you had released that in theaters, it wouldn't. It no, wouldn't you couldn't have, have done, done that. well. Couldn't have done that. You couldn't have done it. It had to be released on, um, you know, HBO Max, and I think that's the issue. So I mean, I hope that what you know they will do is they'll look at a model like Disney, you know, and which I think they're actually planning on doing, and actually start releasing some of these series like WandaVision and. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, because there's so much more time to tell a story, introduce more characters, and and get you involved with those characters so that you want to go to a movie and see a bigger Avengers film with all of these little characters in it. Before I let you go, uh, people sitting at home that might not be out and are curious about things like the Oscars might want to know what you are hearing, buzzwise, stuff like that. Me, I'm done with award shows. I, if, if I've been taught anything during the pandemic, I care so little about the uh, <laughs> actors and actresses, and I just care about the actual movie. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, but something about me, something has been turned off in me that ever that ever would have cared whether or not they wanted to thank their brother and their high school basketball coach on stage while they got a little trophy. <laughs> it's not the same for me anymore. I think the ratings show that now. Like Nobody watches these things, but is there buzz around anybody for the Oscars? Is there a movie that is nominated that you're like, go out and see this. It's available someplace. It's actually worth it. Or, or are these like the people that just happen to get Oscar nominations because there weren't a lot of movies over the last year and they probably wouldn't have been nominated in the first place if like they would have had a full slate of movies? Well, I think what the surprise was this year was there were so many films that got so many awards. And I think a part of it is, is that you didn't follow a traditional path where you were seeing these films being released over a period of time in theaters and then, you know, really having an adequate time at these circuits and film festivals. Um, I, I, we really don't even know. I mean, we have some ideas of who are, you know, the, who, the winners will be in certain categories. I think one really strong one will be uh, Nomadland. Is that the best picture, do you think? Do you think that wins best picture? My wife watched it and told me it was absolutely incredible. I haven't gotten around to it yet, but she's like, that movie was amazing. Was, is, that, is that a contender? I, I absolutely think it will be, if not for Best Director, I think as a shot at Best Picture. Um, you know, there's a lot of films that I haven't seen, so I always feel, I'm always reluctant to make predictions until I've seen the films, so I feel like I'm a little far behind. The one that I, I was disappointed with that a lot of other people loved was Mank. 
and I, I wouldn't, I don't know that I recommend even people watching it. it. It's, it's very, it's a different kind of film. I didn't particularly care for it, but it, it got the most Oscar nominations out yeah, of all. It's totally going to win everything. Cause you know what? Everybody out there in Oscar world wants to prove they're smarter than the rest of us. That's all they want to do. Oh, is this a crappy movie? That's really weird. Give it everything. And, and, yeah. they won't, and they won't tell everybody they're not cultured enough to understand good film. I like, that's why, that's why Ben's on. Ben's a South Sider out in SoCal who's like, Mank sucks. Like, don't, yeah. don't listen to these people. All right, bud. Yeah. I appreciate you jumping on. I know that you got your first shot. You're still waiting on your second one. I know it really won't matter out there in California. Like I said, you're going to be locked down forever, but the pubs are open here, bud. Come find me and I'll take you out for some craft beer on the South side because there's plenty to do out here now. It's very different from where you're at. I don't, you, you're, you're like, remember Escape from L.A.? That's where you are. You need to yeah. escape from L.A. and get back to the south side. <laughs> very true. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You know, I get muscle aches all the time. I've gone from being able to do whatever I want to and not feeling any pain to basically getting pain for any kind of physical activity. Good news, there's a local family-owned Southside business that provides a CBD topical that will not break the bank. Creaky Bone Balm offers concentrated relief for creaky bones. It is an effective hemp-based CBD in a rejuvenating balm. And guess what? It's made in small batches, always free of preservatives, and all natural ingredients. It's great for muscle aches, tension, inflammation, joint pain. You can even use it for skin ailments like burns and dry cracked skin. Right now, go to creakybone.com and use the promo code BASEMENT. Get 20% off your order. Whether it's physical activity or off-season stress, Creaky Bone's gonna help you out. Use that promo code BASEMENT, 20% off your order, right now at creakybone.com. I We've never talked about it here on this podcast, but Bill and I did morning radio together. Right. In the late long 90s. Long time ago, 25 long, years ago. Long time ago, back when we were young and thin, Dry. and women wanted to well, have sex with us. you weren't really thin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's right. I've seen pictures. Be honest, so. no, I, I, wasn't. Than now. I wasn't. I'm actually thinner now, which so. is ridiculous. Yeah, and I was pulling. In, I was pulling in girls that I, like you didn't make any sense for how fat I was. You were the Howard right. Stern of the Midwest. Yeah, that's what I was. The Southern Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but the thing is. We would make like ridiculous jokes. And in the late nineties, you could get away with anything. Like there was oh, no absolutely. such thing as wokeness. So now when I tell my son about stuff that we did, he looks at me, he goes, you're a terrible person. Right. No, because like, we were, I mean, yeah, you're if a you put it person. under today's lens, we oh, were, we were the worst people. Like if there we, wasn't, if there was Twitter back canceled. when we were, we'd be canceled. <laughs> There's no way we get through the nineties. There's no way I have a radio well, career. I'm There's no way that I ever tell a joke. wasn't a thing in the nineties. There's no way that I'm doing stand up comedy with Lewis Black or you're, you're running around in Southern California. For you with Dick Clark, like we're screwed. Right. Like that never happens. Like Facebook opens, we post at nine a.m. We're off the air by by noon. <laughs> like remember when we tried to sell a baby on the radio? Like we did sell a baby. <laughs> well, we sold the. We pretended the baby was actually our baby to sell. We what? used a producer's sister's <laughs> newborn's picture but and put it on eBay. It. <laughs> right, and then Dan Rather yelled about us on the on, on like national news. Like now they would have hunted us down and murdered us in the street. That's what would have happened. So it's a very different world. So every time he hears like a story about what his dad used to do, he's like, wow, you should be in prison. The important thing to remember is that these things did happen. And you know what? Throughout time and throughout, um, you know, consciousness and social society, we, we learned that things were wrong and things right. were right or whatever it right. was. But we can't look at things that happened in the past under today's Exactly. Lens. And if and, and if I Bill, think that's and if Bill well. wants to keep a midget in a little <laughs> hut next to his door. <laughs> wait, I have, are, to, wait, I have are, to build him a hut? Who are you? To, oh, you don't give him a hut, just a raincoat? Who are you to judge Bill? He has a raincoat. <laughs> what do we need a hut for? So on April 6th, pretty much all the suburbs on the south side of Chicago are having their local elections. And Lorraine Swanson from the patch covers an awful lot of those suburbs and she's been doing it for a long time she joins us on Southside pod how are you lorraine good i'm uh uh and it's, uh, thank you for having me on your show so is it really getting exciting like i can't really tell there's signs everywhere but like is this like 
excitement time right now for you covering all of these things? Uh, there's a lot of fireworks happening, and there's a heated uh, Orland Township race. Um, the uh, former mayor of Orland Park, Dan McLaughlin, he's he's coming back to challenge uh, uh, Keith Peekow, who's running for a second term. He, he's trying to reclaim his seat. Um, similarly, in Allset, uh, there's a pretty kind of a heated mayoral, same in uh, Crestwood. You have a uh, former village trustee, township, uh, Worth Township trustee. Uh, he lost his bid for mayor in 2013, and he's coming back to uh, do battle with Lou Presta, who's running for his third term. Uh, Mr. Presta, as you may know, he is facing uh, a federal indictment for alleged bribery with uh, Safe Speed. Safe Speed continues, their, their executives continue to maintain uh, their innocence. They have not been charged with wrongdoing. They, they have some consultants that have also been caught up in, in these indictments of bribery. I know that in Oak Lawn that they canceled their, they just let their contracts with Safe Speed expire. They don't have any, you know, red light cameras at the moment. But, you know, bombs are going on all around in the local races. And as you know, Chris, politics is local. I, that's what I find exciting about these races. You know, we do our best to. Uh, reach out to candidates, give them a chance uh, to respond to our questionnaire so that, you know, voters can make informed decisions when they go into the polling place. And I just want to urge all your listeners to, to please go out and, and vote in the April 6th election, as you mentioned. And I, I just think it's important because these are these elected officials, they're going to have the most direct impact on you, on your property taxes, on uh, issues in your community. So if anyone uh, has any questions or they want to reach out to me and uh, they're looking for information, you know, I'll try to get it for them. They can reach me at Patch. Just click on my byline and It'll it'll have a uh, it'll take you right to my email. Lorraine Swanson from the Patch. Thanks for joining us, Lorraine. Well, thank you, Chris. <laughs> oh man, Mike, listen to this. Before we get out of here, Bill is now complaining right here at the end of the show that we make fun of everybody. Make fun of each other's wives, but nobody makes fun of his wife. Like, I'm trying to think that you don't like her. No, you want to make... I'll make fun of your wife. You want me to make fun yeah. of your wife? Whew. I mean, we make fun of Mike's wife and your wife. Well, you never talk about your wife. I have a crazy He doesn't want to get talk about up. this before? No, tell me. This tell me all about your wife. deja vu right All right, now. go for it. No, I, I'm just... I'm waiting for you to talk about my wife. I don't know. I mean, like... That's what I'm saying. Why? Something, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know, if, know enough about her. I know that she married you, so obviously she... She's messed up. Yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> I was She makes a say. lot of mistakes. Like, she, she has made mistakes in her life. Like, <laughs> as bad she, mistakes? At the end of the day, when you fall asleep next to her... At least I'm the snoring, last mistake, though. She sits there and stares at the ceiling and said, how did I get here? She, real, <sighs> with she the deep, evaluates her life choices? Right, with a very right. deep sigh. And then she sits there and she thinks <sighs> to herself, all I am is a speck on top of another speck floating through infinite space... In the middle of a galaxy that's part of a billion galaxies. How many galaxies. Tylenol with codeine will kill him? <laughs> Somehow, I ended up with this guy. And like, how do I grind it up to put it in his soup? <laughs> like, how do I make it look like he has a disease and I slowly right. kill him by just giving him a little bit at a time until I kill him off? Yeah, then maybe that's what she does. No, she's a sweetheart. She puts but up she with wants to kill you. No, but she, she, puts up, she puts up with, like, let me tell everybody a little bit about Bill. Oh, no. Bill loves Halloween. I do. Bill takes that's an understatement. People. Halloween, like he is the character from the Nightmare Before Christmas, <laughs> and he is going to bring you the greatest Halloween ever. And the moment Halloween ends, he goes to stores and he buys stuff 
that's on sale because now sure. it's clearance, including candy for next Halloween for next year. And that's what he does. He keep people come over to his house and stand outside in front of it in Mount Greenwood and watch Bill's house. And then when he does Christmas, he does a very good job at it. But you can tell it's not Halloween, right? You I mean kind of have to after the display, right. like people are like, oh, wonder, like, what, if you don't wonder what this dude's gonna yeah, do for Christmas if, now. If you don't put up Christmas decorations after the Halloween display. You're a Satanist. By the way, like, in that's my house, how they would feel about you. In my house, we have a Halloween Christmas tree, by the way. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm sure you do. But, like, that's kind of like your thing. Like, so it's almost like you decorate the house during other holidays sure. to cover that's all we do, for yeah. how over right. the top you are with Halloween. At like, for St. Patrick's yeah. Day, I would imagine you'll throw an Irish flag out there and yeah, do a couple things. You know, Nothing little, great. A couple, a couple shamrocks, shamrocks on the window. Right. 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 Yeah, exactly. You hire a midget, the window sits on the porch. You hire a midget, he sits on the porch. Well, he's always there. He, well, this he's, time he's, he's wearing him. He's like the goose on yeah, him. We just dress him up for this holiday. This time he's wearing green. Put on your raincoat. It's not a real holiday right now, so this is where you wear your raincoat. We will tell you when you wear your Easter Bunny ears. But in the meantime, wear your raincoat, midget. And he just goes... <laughs> By the way, wear your raincoat, midget.com. <laughs> for all your midget... Raincoat me. Thank you for listening to see what's happening on the Southside Pod. On the Southside Pod. Join us again and be sure to tell a friend about the Southside Pod. About the Southside Pod. All things about the neighborhood we live in. All things about. The places that we go, it's the best side of Chicago, the South Side Pod. I picture like an angry midget listening to the show and just hitting, like, <laughs> angrily hitting his mouse, but like, it's it's so big compared to his hand <laughs> <laughs> that, he, that he couldn't hit it. Oh my God. It was like, oh my God.